welcome back to the channel. Today is a very highly requested video on tips and tricks on how to get your goldfish to breed. So one thing that you need is a male and a female. And while that sounds absolutely ridiculous and people should know they have to have those two things, a lot of times what I find is I get a lot of questions, especially on my Instagram, on how to get the fish to breed and generally <laughs> the fish turns out to be two males or two females and that's why they're not breeding. <laughs> so anyway, once you've got a male and a female, some things you can do to encourage them to breed. The first thing I'll talk about is what I do if I want to encourage my fish to breed. So Generally, the first thing I do is I make sure that they have really clean water. So I'll do a about a 100% water change on their tank. And then I will continue to do 50% water changes every day to make sure that they have the cleanest water available. I will also, when I do the 100% water change, I will make sure that their filters are very clean and that they're not clogged or anything. I generally clean out filters every week with their normal water change. So I just rinse out the media and make sure that nothing is clogged or anything like that. And then generally what I do is I make sure that when I start doing the water changes every day, I start to cool down the water. And it's very important that you don't cool them, you don't cool them down too fast because you'll shock them. All my fish are inside. So all of their tanks stay at about 73, 74 degrees all day, all night, year round. So generally what I do is I start cooling them down a degree or two a day. So once I get at about 66, 67 degrees, I generally start to slowly warm them back up. And what this does is it tricks the fish into thinking that it's springtime and goldfish are pre-programmed to breed in the spring. So when you cool them down and warm them back up, they think that winter is over and springtime is beginning. So they'll start to get interested in each other. Another thing that I do is I play with my lights. And when I say play with my lights, what I really mean is I leave their light on longer because as you know, in the spring and the summertime, it stays light out longer in the day than it does in the wintertime. Most of the time, their lights are on about eight to 10 hours a day. And then in the, and when I want them to breed, I will make sure that their lights on about 12 to 14 hours a day. So you're kind of tricking the fish into thinking that it's sunny outside and it's spring. So, that's another thing that I do. And generally that alone will make my fish go into breeding mode. So that's usually the only thing that I have to do. I had people ask me if I hand spawn my fish and I do not. Um, there are several reasons why I don't. Um, one being that you generally do get a lot more eggs if you hand spawn, but I don't have the room to do that with. <laughs> I can't raise hundreds of fish. Another reason is because I feel like I'm putting the fish through unneeded stress and I just don't want to do that. And so I let them do it naturally into tricking them that it's spring, basically. Um, some other things that you can do to make your fish spawn, you can feed them live foods. So I've heard, I've not done this myself, but I've heard that feeding them red wigglers uh, as in the worms that you go fishing with, tends to make them want to breed. Uh, I've also heard of feeding them shrimp and brine shrimp also puts them in the mood. Um, I generally don't do that. I just feed them more often. So right now, since it's been winter time, they've only been fed once a day. So when I want them to breed, I'll start feeding them three times a day. So I may feed them Jappy's Growth Recipe, New Life Spectrum, and uh, gel food. And I'll do that. Um, I'll rotate those throughout the day and I'll feed them three times. So you can do that. Um, that usually works for me. I've never like had an issue with 
my fish not wanting to uh, spawn and having to go to live foods or um, having to having to like hand spawn them I've never had to do that so another thing that you want to look for is uh, chasing and I have a little short video on chasing for you the male chases the female when they get in the mood and are ready to breed so when I see that happening a lot of times what I'll do is I'll throw in my spawning mops um, and I will show you that in a second um, but I throw in my spawning mops to make sure that if any eggs are released they will stick to those mops so I do not leave the mops in with the adults I'll leave them in 24 to 48 hours and then I'll take them out um, and put them in their own tank. And the reason that I do that is I want to make sure that the female has released all the eggs that she wants to. And I want to give the male time to fertilize the eggs. So after a day or two, I'll move the mops into their own tank and wait until they hatch. So that's another question that I get a lot. How long does it take for goldfish eggs to hatch? And that really depends on the eggs. <laughs> I have had eggs hatch at three days. I have had eggs hatch at five and I've had eggs hatch at seven days. So generally the rule of thumb is three to seven days. I've had everything in between, including three, five and seven days. <laughs> So it just depends. And I always heard that it was, um, I always heard it was temperature sensitive, but because my house and my tanks stay the exact same temperature all the time, I never really found that to be true because every spawn that I have hatched, they have been at the exact same temperature and I have got three days, five days and seven days. So. I actually thought the ones that hatched on the seventh day, I really thought that they just weren't fertilized and they just weren't going to, but they surprised me. So it can happen anywhere in that time range. It just depends on the eggs, I guess. Another thing I wanted to add on to this video was my previous video was a look at my breeder butterfly telescopes that I got last week from King Koi and Goldfish. And I am happy to say that they did spawn and I do have eggs from them. Um, I will be moving their spawning mops over into a tank tomorrow morning and hopefully I'll have some baby butterfly telescopes very soon. Uh, I was not expecting them to breed so quickly, but I am not complaining. I am happy. So um, I'm very excited to raise my first batch of butterfly telescopes. It will be very interesting. I have only ever raised Arandas. So this will be very cool. And while I'm on the subject, spawning mops. Um, this is what they look like. So the eggs are actually on the spawning mops. You can see them on there. Um, I made the spawning mops myself. They're not hard at all to make and they I've kept them for over probably two years now and they work really well. The eggs are extremely sticky and so they will stick to anything they come into contact with. So you really want them to stick to ornaments or plants or um, the spawning mops because you want to be able to remove that from the tank and put it in a, another tank or a tub um, for them to hatch on. So. It's, it's best to have something like that in a tank in order to catch all the eggs you can. It's really important to do because if you, if you start scraping the eggs off of the glass in the aquarium or uh, anything like that, you can actually kill the eggs. They're very, very fragile. So you want to be very careful when handling them. So I hope that this answered all your questions. If you have any more questions, leave them down below and I will be happy to answer them. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see y'all next time.